Now, we had some massive games last week, and um, I guess we'll be doing the review of round 16 uh, based on the votes that we do every week. And um, as I've been saying as well, at the end of the season, we'll be doing like a live um, countdown of like the votes that we do. So we do the 3 2 1 votes every single game of um, the season. We'll be doing it so far. I've revealed them every now and then just to keep everyone updated, but they're all on the Instagram. If you guys want to go through and count them all, it's all up to you. But that's basically what our countdown is going to be for this year. And maybe with about a month to go, I won't be revealing votes and stuff. Um, so then it was just like fully, so then no one knows other than me and maybe my brother, who by the way is away again this week. He's got work again. So that's a little bit, that sucks a bit, but he did give the votes for the Sunday games today. So I appreciate that from him, but let's get into the Thursday night game. Brisbane just absolutely smashed Richmond. I guess maybe they're a little bit sluggish off the bye, Richmond, but I don't think there's really an excuse for this performance. Um, they were actually pushing towards the eight going, and I actually think they had a real chance against Brisbane in this game. But not, not many of them showed up, and now they sit 15th on the ladder, and they're going to be in a very tough spot to even make a push towards finals. To be fair, though, they're only six points out of the eight, and with, a lot of, with what, eight games to go, they still could make it, but I think it's a little bit too far back for them now. But on the lesser three, two, one's votes, we gave three votes to Lockie Neal, two votes to Joe Danaher, and the one vote to Hugh McCluggage. Look, um, Lockie Neal was brilliant, especially in the second half. He definitely lifted for his team when they um, wanted to, you know, put a little bit of a dagger through the Tigers, and I think he did brilliantly. Joe Danaher was brilliant up forward. I think he needs to find that consistent form to push Brisbane towards a potential grand final or premiership. Because when he plays his poor footy, he is very hard to watch. And I think he'd be one of the most frustrating players in the competition. But when he's playing well, he's one of the best. And Hugh McCluggage has been very quiet this season. Probably been one of the very... I don't know. He was, I mean, he's he probably an All-Australian wingman last year if they actually picked a wingman in the All-Australian team. But he actually has played pretty poorly this year. But on the, um, he was definitely very good in the first half against Richmond. And... If, it was, if the votes were called at halftime, McCluggage would have got the three, but Lockie Neal definitely lifted in the second half to get um, Brisbane to a very comfortable win. After that, we get to the Sydney-Geelong game. Uh, as we said, this was a scrappy game. This was a shocker to watch, really. Um, I, do, we, I was talked about it a minute, like a minute ago. If you guys want to listen to it again, feel free to do so. But I do have the 3-2-1 votes here. Three votes gave to Errol Goulden, two votes to Tom Atkins, and one vote to Braden Campbell. Three votes to Errol Gordon. I think that was pretty self-explanatory. He was probably the best on the ground all night. Um, he did have some stages where he should have kicked goals as well. So maybe... I just think that the Sydney as a whole need to work on their kicking. I think they were like second for accuracy this season, which shocked me because I know they've lost a lot of games this season based on their goal kicking. I think maybe it flattered them a little bit against West Coast where they kicked very, very straight. But again, there was no pressure on them. So when pressure comes to Sydney, they don't know. their kicking goes out the window, really. But the two votes I gave to Tom Atkins, and I'm really impressed about how he's playing this season for Geelong. Um, probably a lot more in the past month or so, considering Dangerfield was out for quite a bit of this season. But he's just been their bull in there. And I don't think anyone would have really seen Tom Atkins to become a midfielder, but he's honestly one of the a really good def, uh, really good defensive midfielder. He played brilliantly last week, Tom Atkins. And he kept them in the game in a lot of stages in this one for Geelong. So I think that Geelong will be very happy with his performances over the past fortnight or so. And the one vote I did give to Braden Campbell, when other players this in this game weren't being clean, he was the cleanest. I think the Sydney are very lucky that he kicked goals as well because Sydney would have lost this game if he didn't kick straight on a couple of occasions. And I think Sydney have definitely found another one here through the academy again. So Sydney will be happy with his performance and maybe Earl, and probably Errol Gordon's as well, but... They definitely got a lot of work on Sydney going into next season. After that, we get to the Bulldogs versus Fremantle. The Bulldogs won again. They pulled away late, which was really good to see from the Bulldogs because Fremantle looked like they may have had them on the ropes late, uh, early in the fourth term. But then the Bulldogs just kicked away, and they actually kicked their top four hopes alive now with the loss to Mel from Melbourne. So um, Fremantle are in a very big hole now. I don't know if they're going to make finals now. They're definitely in that log jam. They've had a couple of games in the past few weeks where... They've had to win, and they've dropped that one, and they dropped the couple. Of, they dropped the Giants game a couple of weeks ago, so I think that they're in a big trouble for him now. I think they'll be okay, like Sydney, because they have a very good young list. But I think this season may almost be over for them. But we get to the three, two, one votes. Three votes get to Eugle Hagen. Two votes to Marcus Bontempelli, and Trelaw got the one vote. Now. Jamara Eugle Hagen has probably been their standout forward this year for the Bulldogs, and he probably has—he probably shouldn't be. I think Aaron Norton has played very poorly at times this season, and uh, somehow Jamara has just played some brilliant footy 
where I don't know where he's pulled this form from, but he's definitely going to be a star. I think it was obviously uh, compared to Buddy Franklin very early on in his um, juniors. So I don't know if he'll ever get to those feet, but he's definitely playing some good footy for the Bulldogs at the moment. And yeah, I think that he's definitely going to be a future star of the game. Two votes gave to Marcus Bontembele. He's been brilliant, you know, this season. Probably a Brownlow favourite at this stage. And he got the two votes. One vote we gave to Alan Trelaw. He just tackled all day, get all day in this game. And um, you always love a tackler. I think that he's going to probably take the spot, though, of Caleb Daniel. So a little bit disappointing on my friend because I have my fantasy team. But um, Alan Trelaw is a quality player. And I think they'd just be very happy to have him back and playing some consistent games because he's been very injury-prone, especially this season. After that, we get to the Crows versus North Melbourne. Not much to talk about here. Crows just smashed North. And I know a lot of people are talking about the Crows being a, a grand, a, well, a finals threat. I honestly don't know if they will be. Unless they make fifth or sixth or somehow scrape into that top four, I don't really see the Crows doing much just because they're winning their games at home and, and, and you know, they're smashing teams at home. They smashed St. Kilda earlier on in the year. You know, I, I don't really think that the, the Crows are going to do much in finals, but I really don't know. I, I, they could if they get some games at home. I think that um, they I think they're actually probably better at home than Port Adelaide at home. To be fair, but I think Port Adelaide are def obviously the better team because they can win away from home. So the Crows went flog North Melbourne. wasn't really a huge deal in my opinion but nonetheless the three two one votes three votes went to riley o'brien two votes went to isaac rankin and the one vote went to ben keys now riley o'brien he's been probably a bit up and down this season but this game he definitely stood up played brilliantly kicked two goals which i don't think riley o'brien i don't think he's kicked multiple goals in his career before that game so it's good to see him getting forward and kicking some goals he's usually a lot more of the ruckman who gets back and helps out the defense taking the last line of defense marks and stuff like that but isaac rankin kicked five goals i I think it's a career high for him, I would assume. He kicks straight, though, which is definitely a compliment for him because he's had some times this year where he's missed a lot of easy shots and not kicked straight. But he kicked five straight in this one. So if he can get some form, he can definitely push the Crows a lot higher. And Ben Keyes is just in a rich vein of form at the moment for the Crows. Um, he kicked two goals as well, playing in the midfield. And I think it's a little bit disappointing because he probably took votes away from uh, Jordan Dawson, who's was in front, I believe, in the votes for us. So I'm not too sure how he's doing in the brown low, but... The more important votes, obviously, are for the um, the Riders medal. So I'm sure Jordan Dawson's just devastated by not getting a vote in that one. <laughs> but nonetheless, we get to the next game, Gold Coast versus Collingwood. And the Gold Coast should be incredibly disappointed with this game. They had a real chance to, in front of a big crowd for their home game. Now, a lot of, I know looking at the crowd, it was mostly Collingwood. But finally, they got a home game which was sold out. And I think the, the last time it happened was in 2014. So to finally get a game that was sold out at their home ground, and then they give this performance, was really disappointing. They lost by 78 points. They didn't kick a goal to, I think, late in the second term, I believe. And this is really disappointing. They have nearly a full-strength team in the Gold Coast Suns at the moment. And I'm not saying they had to beat Collingwood, but they had to be competitive, and this was just really disappointing. But then we get to the 3-2-1 votes. Three votes go to Nick Dacos, two votes to, Jeremy, uh, to Jamie Elliott, and the one vote to John Noble. Nick Dacos is just smashing the competition at the moment. He got the three votes in this one, had 40-plus touches, kicked a goal, was brilliant around the midfield. People can say that he had, like, you know, he gets his cheat touches, but I think he just uses it very, very well. So at least when he does use it, he's very creative with it. And he's almost a Brownlow favourite at the moment at the age of 19. I don't think I've seen a kid at 19, you know, take over the AFL competition the way that he has. And he's playing some brilliant footy at the moment. Uh, Jamie Elliott got five goals in this game, and he was just brilliant up forward. Uh, he had Charlie Ballard in the first half, but he did too well. I think that um, I don't know if Charlie Ballard should be playing on a small defend, a uh, small forward. In my opinion, I think he's too good in the air, and you put the ball on the ground. I think Elliott's going to win all day. So he had a good he had a good day out, and he probably needed it considering he probably hasn't had a big year so far, Jamie Elliott. And we know how quality he can be. So if he can hit some rich vein of form late in the season, he could definitely have a real push for the for the grand final for, or a premiership for Collingwood. And the one vote again to John Noble, he's definitely getting some real good form in recent weeks. John Noble obviously picked up as a pre-season, not a pre-season, a mid-season uh, draftee. And he's playing some really good footy at the moment, John Noble. So I think Collingwood would be really happy to see that. And um, yeah, I think Collingwood, I think is still the favourites for the premiership. But speaking of another premiership contender, we have Port Adelaide versus Essendon next. 
And I was talking to my brother after the, after this game because obviously he's a Port supporter. And he was... We both said the same thing. Dan, thank God for Port Adelaide that Dan Houston took that mark on 50. Because if it was any other player on the team, I don't actually think anyone would have made that distance. Maybe Kane Farrell. But other than that, I don't think anyone was kicking that ball with a wet ball from 50, 50 plus metres out. It was a brilliant kick from Dan Houston. Just made the distance and... They are definitely up there, Port. I think they should be talked about a little bit more at the moment. I think it's just everyone's just saying Collingwood's going to win the Premiership really at this stage, or they're definitely the Grand Premiership favourites. And I tend to agree with that. But Port Adelaide definitely can't be you know, shied away from. They're playing some massive footy at the moment. And it's very disappointing for Essendon because they had this game with about a minute to go. They just couldn't lock it in, and they just couldn't lock it down their end. So you can't really have too much to say against Essendon. I think it's a little bit... Dangerous for them now, though. They are really teetering on eighth spot right now. Don't have the best percentage, and they've got teams like Geelong, GWS behind them. And, you know, they're both biting at the bit at the moment because, you know, Geelong are going to be very hard to beat down in Geelong, and GWS are in some rich vein of form. So Essendon, like I said um, when we did our uh, rest of season predictions for the rest of the season, I actually said that Essendon are going to fall out of the eight. And it's only because they've got a real tough six weeks and the two first games that they've had when we made that video, they've lost. So Essendon, I think, should be making finals from here, but they have to win one of these games in the next four weeks, or they may well miss out. But nonetheless, we get to the 3-2-1 votes. Three votes gave to Connor Rosie, two votes to Dan Houston, and the one vote to Jai Caldwell. Connor Rosie was probably the difference in this game at the end. I know Dan Houston kicked the winning goal, but he was definitely a lot cleaner in a wet Muggy, mushy, uh, muggy, a wet game of footy. So you got to give credit to Connor Rosie there. Dan Houston, I'm not giving him two votes just because of that goal on the side. I mean, it was massive, but he was brilliant all night. Had 30 plus touches off half back, and for a guy that they picked up as a um, late draft pick, I believe he's been a massive godsend for the power. And um, last one, I gave to Jai Caldwell the last vote, uh, one vote. He's actually been very good, especially since um, Darcy Parrish went down. And suddenly, he's probably got that midfield spot, probably taken over from Ben Hobbs, I believe. And he's actually playing some really good footy, Jai Caldwell. So, obviously came from the Giants, didn't really get a go there. Got picked up by Essendon, took an injury last year, early in the season. But this season, he's hit strength to strength. And he's definitely going to be an asset for Essendon in their push to September. After that, we get a Sunday afternoon early game. The Blues smashed Hawthorne. I don't, I don't even know if they got a goal in the first half. Hawthorne, they were disappointing again. Looks like they really can't hold up without James Sicily, which is very disappointing. I think he's gone for next week as well. So I really can't see them winning without him. They conceded another 100-point loss. Uh, sorry, another 100 points against their opposition. Carlton did very well. Uh, my brother did the votes in this one. He gave the three votes to Adam Chera, two votes to Sam Doherty, and the one vote to Harry Mackay. I don't think Carlton are back by any means. They've beaten two very poor teams in the last two weeks. They beat the Gold Coast when the Gold Coast were playing poorly. And they beat Hawthorne, who can't win a game without their captain, James Sicily. So I don't think this means much for Carlton. They get a little bit of a percentage back, and I don't think that makes a difference, though. I think they've got they've got Fremantle next week. So I think that's at home, I believe. So if they can win that one as well, you know, I don't think it makes a difference, though. I think this is a failure of a season, unless somehow Carlton can scrape into the eight. Which, I mean, they technically could. They're only six points behind, but I just don't think they've done much here, Carlton. I think it's a very disappointing season, and unless they do somehow scrape into the eighth spot, they it's just been a, a failure, in my opinion. But nonetheless, next we get to a massive upset. Melbourne versus GWS up in Darwin. I think Melbourne is about time to stop get, having games up there. They're not that good up there, and they've lost another game, which could potentially lose them a top four spot very soon. GWS were massive in this game, though. Um, halfback Harry Himmelberg was brilliant as well. Um, Tom Green was massive. Toby Green was good as well. And they're just... Adam Kingsley, he's taken a couple of probably... maybe He may have made his run a little bit too late towards the finals this season, but he's definitely the coach for the Giants. He's getting them to play some really good football. And the Giants are going to be very good in the next year or so. But Melbourne, on the other hand, had 20 scoring shots. And we saw Sydney on Friday night. They cost themselves a win. And this cost um, Melbourne a win as well. They kicked 15 behinds. And bad kicking's bad football. We've said that about Carlton all year. And Melbourne just dropped four points there. It's, not very, it's very disappointing. And I think they definitely need Clayton Oliver back really quickly. Because they've lost their last two games now, Melbourne. They lost to Port Adelaide about a month or so ago. And they're teetering on that fourth spot right now. And they've got, you know, St. Kilda, the Bulldogs, and the Crows, really, who are pushing for that fourth spot. And even the Cats, to an extent. If the Cats can get on a bit of a run, they could very well take that fourth spot from them. So 
Melbourne are a bit of a hole right now. But nonetheless, the 3-2-1 votes, we had the, uh, my brother again did the votes here. Uh, Jack Viney got the three votes, Tom Green got the two votes, and Christian Petrarca got the one vote. So Jack Viney, I think, for one for Melbourne, has definitely stood up in the past couple of weeks as well. Was massive, was massive on um, King's birthday against Collingwood and got them over the line, in my opinion. But yeah, I think he's playing some really good um, footy at the moment, but I think a lot of Melbourne players are definitely underperforming at the moment. And finally, we get to a really almost an upset of the seat of probably this century, really. Uh, even though West Coast, you know, were at home, they nearly got over St. Kilda, and St. Kilda survived an absolute massive scare. They could have really been in trouble here, the Saints. But they got Joe over the line against West Coast by eight points. There was only one goal kicked in the last quarter, but it went the Saints' way, and they just got over the line against West Coast. Um... My brother's done the votes again. Three votes to Brad Crouch. He had over, I think he had 16 or 17 tackles. He was massive in this game. Two votes to Rowan Marshall and the one vote to Owens. And he got four goals in this one. And this kid, I think, should be definitely up there with the, with the Rising Star nominations. I think he's probably not being talked about enough, really. And I think he's been brilliant this year, especially playing his second ruck, when that can be a very difficult role to play. He's been brilliant. West Coast, look, what can you say? I mean, look, they were very close in this one. I, again, I don't think it makes much of a difference. This really just shows the St. Kilda didn't show up. And they were lucky to get the win in the end. And they hold their fifth spot right now. And they're only a you know, percentage behind Melbourne from the top four. So, I mean, the, some, te- some teams up the top can always have a bad day. But if they can just survive through and get the win, it can make a massive difference. And I guess that's what St. Kilda did. So, I don't really know how much St. Kilda can do through the finals. But... They definitely pulled off a win here. Only two wins from their past three, from their last five games. So they are in a bit of trouble here. I don't know really, because because I've said there's a lot of teams pushing for that top top eight spot outside of the eight at the moment. Really, I could list any team from fifteenth down, could fifteen up, could make it. I really don't think Carlton, Richmond, or Sydney could, and I'd probably just cross out Gold Coast. But there's three teams there, Frio, GWS, Geelong, really pushing for those top eight spots. And if those teams from fifth to eighth, if they're not careful, they could definitely miss out on finals this season.